On this video, I'd like to quickly show you how to do a point of sale transaction where you ring up a sale in the system. You can pull up point of sale on top of whatever you happen to be working on within the software, as you can with any other feature within the program. You can have multiple screens open at the same time, which is a wonderful feature of the software. This way you don't have to remember whose account you were just working on or what you were doing. So if I had point of sale minimized on the bottom of my screen, which I can have that running all the time, I would simply just pull it up on top of what I'm doing. I could be entering items and just pull it up. So I don't have it open at this time, so I'm going to go ahead and click on point of sale to do a sale. Now this screen can take up your entire monitor, so it's very, very large and very easy to read. We have also made the posting modes very easy to read. We have three modes here. We have easy, which is based on what the item is selling for, or if you have actually told it to be marked down after a certain period of time, it knows that based on scanning it or entering the consigner number and item number from the ticket. Uh, change post would be if you'd like to change the price on the item. You also, of course, have the ability to tell it that you'd like to give the consigner the percentage a split that they're going to receive based on the original price or what you've changed it to. And then the same with sale mode. Sale would be where you take a specific percentage off either for the day or for a specific item. Now, it's, it's sitting here and it's in easy mode, which is highlighted so you easily know which mode it's in. Now, to begin the sale, you either scan the tag or enter the account number and item number on your keyboard. Okay. Now, before you begin the sale, you have a few things that you can set in the software. You can set it so that when you first come into point of sale, it will ask you for the uh, employee's login. And I'll show you where that is as far as the setup goes. Setup, point of sale setup. And here it asks you if you would like to display the logon prompt for each sale. So if you did that, if you click this, then every time that you log into point of sale, it'll ask for the initials of the person ringing up the sale, which is great for security purposes. Um, then second choice here that you can have it prompt you for is the customer on each sale. That will actually pop up the customer list before you go into point of sale. I'm going to go ahead and click on this so that you can see that next time I pull up point of sale. Um, this one actually asks you if you'd like to open the cash drawer when selecting no to the print receipt so that it opens the cash drawer for you anyway, even though you're not giving a receipt. And then um, this is checked because it's prompting you for a check number if you're saying that the person's paying by a check. And then you can default the posting mode like ours came up to easy, or you could have it always set at change or sale. Um, we also do layaways through this part of the software, and you can default the period of how long you want the layaways to be. Uh, that's the next sale that's, that's available in the system. And then you also can uh, apply a discount when using store credit because a lot of stores uh, want to give the ability to um, their consigners to say, hey, you know, if you're going to go ahead and use the money that's owed to you at store credit, I'll give you an extra percentage. And that's what you would fill in right there. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK here, close the screen out. Now, if I did want to select who the customer was before I begin the sale, it will track their purchases. So, if I want to select the customer, I can do it manually if I didn't have the list pop up automatically. I'm going to click on Select Customer. I'm going to say it's Linda Tavani that's in here buying now. So, I'm going to hit T for Tavani because I have this in last name order. Let's go right down to Linda Tavani. I'm going to click on OK. And it's now showing that the customer is number 11, Linda Tavani, and she's actually owed $2.25 through today. So I may use this towards her purchase. Okay. So now at this point, I am ready to go ahead and scan my ticket um, with the barcode reader, or I can actually, of course, manually enter it, just like any retail or um, grocery store would. So at this point, I'm looking at my ticket, and let's pretend it's the person that we just put inventory in on, account number 565. And we put in numbers 8 through 10 when we did that, actually, because she already had seven other items in there. So at this point, I just hit 565, the dash key, and the number 8, and then hit Enter. Ready for my next item, 565-9, Enter. Now, if I had a scanner, I'd just be scanning item after item. And then there was one other item, 565-10, Enter. Okay, now I have entered three items. It nicely shows me how many. I have put in so I don't lose my count. If I want to remove an item, I can do that. I could click on this and remove the item. I've saved with removing payments. Very simple. The other really wonderful thing is if I wanted to put this entire transaction on a MasterCard, rather than having your employees have to, to, to physically type in how much it was owed, I can just click on MasterCard like I'm going to do, and it fills in the amount for me. And to finish the sale, it's as simple as hitting Finish. And it asks me if I would like to print a receipt. I'm going to say no.